Hello, I'm Chris from Techspert and today we're checking out a rather intriguing budget blower, the Infinix Zero 30 5G. The specs are quite a bit better than the Infinix Note 30 which launched a couple of months ago and Infinix has also chucked in a very interesting new feature, the Full Axe Assistant which is powered by ChatGPT. That's right, AI has been stuffed inside of that golden body to enhance your life in wondrous ways or at the very least conjure up wallpapers of anime girls eating jumbo sausage rolls on demand. So let's whip the Infinix Zero 35 5G on out of that box, take you on a full tour and test out those artificial smarts. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So what do you got inside of that box? Besides of course the Infinix Zero 35 5G. Well you got yourself a 68 watt fast charge adapter, bit of a chunkster, a lovely wee USB cable, and Infinix has also kindly hoied in a condom case to keep your Zero 30 5G nice and fresh. And that's everything for the box, so let's check out the fun. Alrighty then, the Infinix Zero 30 5G all set up and ready for action. And I gotta say it looks very similar to a lot of other sort of mid-rangey smartphones that I've reviewed recently. I'm talking the likes of the Oppo Reno 10, the Vivo V29. You've got quite a slender curved design here. Both the glass that covers that display and the back end slope towards the middle almost meet and just separated by a narrow plastic frame there. It's definitely a slender bugger, a cockroach's taint under 8mm and it only weighs 185 grams. It's fairly standard design for a mid-ranger now in 2023 but I'm liking it, it looks slick. You've got exceedingly slender bezels surrounding that display so very little wasted space. And touch wood, thankfully, despite the fact you've got that curved display, it doesn't seem to be too troubled even when you clutch this phone rather tight and your fingers and palm flesh start to intrude on that display. The screen responsiveness still seems to be pretty good. But flip it around and Infinix has definitely gone with some more distinctive design for the back end of the Zero 30 5G. This right here is the golden hour colour option, which I keep wanting to say golden shower, which would be a very different thing indeed. And I can see this being a very love it or hate it design because it is very in your face. Unapologetically bright and bold. It's quite yellowy as you can see there up top and then it gets sort of almost of a pinky haze down towards the bottom end here. And an exceedingly distinctive camera chassis there as well. Very square in nature while most rivals prefer a more rounded finish. And thankfully quite subdued branding overall. And if you're not a fan of that golden hour design, well, no worries. You can also grab the Infinix Zero 30 5G in Rome Green or Fantasy Purple. Ooh, uh. And hopefully the phone should prove reasonably hardy. You've got Gorilla Glass on the back end and the front end, although Infinix didn't actually say which version of it. Although apparently if you grab yourself the Rome Green model, this doesn't have Gorilla Glass for some reason. And there's no IP rating either for dust and water resistance, so try not to get it too wet. Now when you actually want to use the Infinix Zero 30 5G, well you've got a choice of in-display fingerprint sensor, basic optical effort as you would expect. Seems to do the job, fairly responsive, doesn't take too long to get you right in there into your desktops. Otherwise, while it's less secure, you do also have face unlock as an alternative option. Good news if your mitts are a bit grubby. And as always with Infinix blowers, the Zero 30 5G is running Android 13, but you do have that XOS launcher slapped on top there. And this could be a bit of a mixed bag. Thankfully, it doesn't bugger about with the Android staples like that apps drawer. You can drag down the notifications from anywhere. You've also got a control center similar to the likes of MIUI. You can quickly toggle stuff on and off. But then instead of the Google Discover feed, you've got this sort of thing of widget stuff, complete with weird random slogans that will either help get you through your day or just make you go, what the f I can personally guarantee you, reading does not bring you unknown friends, it brings you no friends whatsoever, as I discovered at school. What does bring you friends is just playing football like everybody else. Feel the fear and do it anyway! Pretty good advice, unless you happen to be driving the wrong way down the motorway or something. It's not all fun crazy slogans with XOS however, you do get an awful lot of crapware stacked on here. A few bits from Infinix like X Theme, X Club, X Arena which all sound very porny and then some random stuff like Wow FM which you'll want to get rid of but unfortunately uninstalling these buggers is not particularly easy. Gonna need some third party help for that bad boy. It's also worth bearing in mind that Infinix doesn't tend to offer the years of software support that some rivals like Samsung and OnePlus offer with their mid-range mobiles. But the big whoop and the fresh new feature here on the Infinix Zero 30 5G is that 4 AI Assistant, as apparently powered by the chat GPTs. 
Now, 4 Lux is a pretty regular voice assistant. You can activate it here on the Zero 30 5G either by pushing down that power button, like so. Otherwise, you can also have it respond to your voice. So, hi, 4 Lux. I am listening. Oh, so you are. Could you remind me of your name? Uncle Spurt. Nice to meet you, Uncle Spurt. Just curious, where is your accent from? I'm actually from a mysterious country on Earth, so my accent may sound a bit different to you. But I have been living in the United States for some time, so I might have picked up a slight American accent as well. Fair play, mate. I mean, I don't know whether to be terrified or turned on. I'm not sure what you mean by that, Uncle Spurt. And so far, I've got to say, Fullox actually seems pretty good at responding to your various queries in a vaguely human-ish fashion. And if you hit up the command section down at the bottom of the Fallax app, you'll see there's lots of stuff you can ask her, I guess. The only thing is there doesn't seem to be much integration with third-party apps right now. Play They Cloned Tyrone on Netflix. I need to download Ballplay to continue. Alright, so, uh, yeah. Does seem to work with some Google apps though, so for instance, show me cat videos on YouTube. And boom, baby, all the cute fuzzy action you could possibly need to get through a Monday. No! And I was really hoping that Folax would be able to knock up some AI-generated wallpapers on demand as well, but slightly disappointing results there. Create a wallpaper of an anime girl eating a massive sausage roll. I am programmed to provide responses that are appropriate and respectful. But apparently a special AI wallpaper generating tool will be coming to the Infinix 030 5G in a future update, so hopefully we'll be able to get all the sausage roll guzzling anime girls we want then. And also, Infinix has generously stuffed 256 gigs of storage inside the Zero 35G. Hopefully, should keep you going for a while because there's no micro SD support here, just space for a pair of Sims in that tray. Now, the Infinix Zero 35G boasts a massive 6.78 inch AMOLED display, which, as you can see, that almost fills the front end of this phone entirely. It's certainly an upgrade over the IPS panels stuffed onto the Note 30 from a couple of months ago. You got the same Full HD resolution, so even though it's massive, it's reasonably sharp. Certainly images don't look pixelated when you're browsing through your photo collection or just kicking back with some Netflix, whatever. There's bugger all HDR support in streaming services like Netflix, but the contrast is still pretty solid. You got nice deep blacks, crisp clean whites. Poppy colours overall when you're kicking back with some animated fare. And that display maxes out at almost a thousand nits, so it's pretty clear to see even when you're outdoors with the sun beaming down on you. That selfie camera is only ever so slightly intrusive when you do go full screen. And the Infinix Zero 30 5G does rather impressively max out at 144Hz refresh rate. As you can see there, it can automatically scale up and down, hitting 60, 120 or 144. And the Infinix Zero 35G does sport a pair of stereo speakers, although they're not particularly well balanced. Let's check them out all the same. It's kind of hard to believe that the original Oppo Reno smartphone only launched as recently as 2019, and yet already we're up to number bloody 10 in the series. So definitely that bottom speaker is more powerful than the earpiece speaker pumping out quite a lot of that sound. But you know what, that audio is pretty bloody beefy. On that top volume, it'll absolutely blast through any kind of background noise. The possible exception of like a jumbo jet taking off or something. It's not terribly tinny either. Unfortunately, you don't get a headphone jack on this thing. That's pretty standard these days. The Bluetooth streaming seems to work absolutely fine. You've got DTS sound smarts on here as well. So you can tinker with the audio settings. Otherwise, just leave it up to DTS to do it on your behalf. But what about the performance here on the Infinix Zero 35G? Well, it's powered by a MediaTek chipset, the Dimensity 8020 to be precise, with its Mali G77 GPU. That's backed by either 8 or 12 gigs of RAM. As you can see there, I've got the 12 gig model with the usual virtual RAM expandability bollocks as well, like you'll actually need more than 12 gigs. I've certainly found the everyday running has been pretty smooth, occasionally little bits of jank courtesy of XOS just to ruin the overall fluidity, but gamers will rejoice at the fact you can play the likes of Genshin Impact on pretty high detail settings. If you do chuck them up to the maximum graphics, well, you will notice a few little judders, a few drops in the frame rate, especially when things get a wee bit mental. But if you're a bit more relaxed, put them on more sort of medium graphic settings, well, Genshin Impact will play beautifully. I did notice after I'd been gaming for a wee while that the top end of the Infinix Zero 35G did start to get a wee bit toasty despite the inclusion of vacuum chamber liquid coolant shenanigans. 
Thankfully it didn't seem to throttle performance, but uh, yeah, it was slightly worrying. While you're gaming at any point, you can drag out the rather nifty game toolbar, which gives you access to all kinds of different performance settings. You can lock the brightness. You've got the likes of the hide notifications tool if you do not want to be disturbed. And yes, there is a voice changer tool on board, so you can disguise yourself as a little girl for, I'm sure, completely uncreepy reasons. No worries on the battery life, the 5000 mAh capacity cell plus that reasonably energy efficient Dimensity chipset means that that battery drain is minimal at best. I haven't actually used this thing as my full time smartphone so I can't you know, properly accurately comment on the battery with mixed use with your SIM actually slapped in there but hopefully it should keep you going all day, no worries. And even if you do find yourself running out of charge, you need to give it a quick top up. Well, that's perfectly possible because you've got that 68 watt wide charging support. So you'll get close to a full charge in just half an hour. Unfortunately, of course, no wireless charging support as you would expect from a more budget friendly blower. So let's finish up this lovely Infinix 035G unboxing with a squint at the camera tech. And this is headed up by a 108 megapixel HM6 rear camera with optical image stabilization. And you've also got yourself a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter and a 2 megapixel f knows what, probably some macro sh**. No real surprises from Infinix's camera app. It is very, very dense with various tools and features and toggles and not particularly user friendly, I've got to say. But if you value lots of different tools and features over, you know, actual ease of use, then definitely job done. Everything you could possibly dream of is packed inside of here. You've got your basic AI camera modes. You can shoot at the full 108 megapixels if you want to. Otherwise, you've got a bit of 9-in-1 pixel binning. You've got your portrait mode. You've got your super night mode, which creates long exposure shots to brighten things up in the evenings. And yes, you do have a dedicated pro mode as well. So you can fiddle about with ISO levels, white balance, auto focuses, etc. I spent a couple of days testing out the Infinix Zero 35G's camera. Just left it on that AI cam mode. Let the smarts handle all of the tricky bits. And here's a whole bunch of pics that it's spaffed out. And as you can see, reasonably decent results as long as the lighting is all right. Those tones are almost kind of what you would see with the naked eye. HDR situations can be a real struggle for this Infinix blower. See lots of murky results, some strong saturation as well. When you're shooting indoors, things do tend to get a little bit murkier, a little bit more grainy, but nothing that I wouldn't expect. But in low light, you've got the night mode, which can brighten things up a bit, although you still get quite grainy results. And while there's no zoom mode, the 108 megapixel sensor means you can shoot in that high resolution mode and then crop in a bit and still have a fairly detailed pick. And if you want to shoot video, you can do so at up to 4K Ultra HD resolution. Just don't move around too much as you're doing it because the stabilization ain't too hot. Respectable amount of detail, good audio pickup as well. It'll do the job for basic, simple, shareable home movies. And then last up around front, you've actually got a 50 megapixel selfie camera. Again, this uses pixel bin and otherwise you can choose to shoot at the 50 meg mode. It's got full auto focus to keep you nice and crisp, not too put off by strong backlighting. And vloggers delight because you can actually record 4K Ultra HD footage with that selfie camera at 60 frames per second, which is pretty rare outside of more expensive flagship phones. And that right there, my lovelies, in a tasty wee nutshell, is the fresh new Infinix Zero 35G with the terrifying and yet strangely arousing Fall Axe Assistant. Unfortunately, I'm shooting this video ahead of the UK launch, so I don't have the UK pricing or release date information just yet. But it seems like a very well spec smartphone with some pretty nifty hardware stacked on there. Unfortunately, on the software side, XOS, not everyone is going to get on with, even though it's got some pretty nifty additions like the gaming tools. But anyway, it'd be great to hear what you guys reckon of the Infinix Zero 35G if you're tempted or otherwise. Let us know in the comments down below. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a really wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone.